is happy to see her man and get the yammy yammy tonight. <laughs> Hey my beautiful peeps, my name is Shar and welcome to Shar TV. For my existing subscribers, I appreciate you coming on back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a recap on episode 3 of Happily Ever After. It's called Don't Take Me For Granted. So if recaps are something that you're interested in watching, feel free to subscribe to my channel. It would mean so much to me and I'd love to see your comments. But let me tell you, before I jump into the recap, mm -mm, it almost did not happen. I'm in the bathroom, getting ready, putting on my bright pink lipstick, and yeah, it just smashed everywhere, all over the floor. It took me forever to clean up. I swear, I was not in the mood to do a recap after this, but I'm like, nah. Char, get yourself together. Your subscribers are waiting. So as always, I'll be discussing the four couples that I've chosen to speak about this season. I'll be starting off with Yara and Jovi. Today, Yara and Jovi are going to meet up with Gwen. Yara wanted to meet with her after Jovi got into the huge fight with his mother. Yara and Gwen do get along quite well, so she does miss spending time with her. And Jovi just wants to get the relationship back to how it was because he was really close with his mother. And especially, he does not want Yara to be alone when he's away at work for a long period of time. Gwen is feeling hurt because she thought that if Yara had a problem, that she could speak to her about it instead of speaking to Jovi. It's been really awkward between them all, and she just wants to talk about things. Like, you really yelled at me. What What did I do to deserve that? Tell Man, me. I don't know. Like, you know, I've been, I was getting a lot of pressure from Yara. The last time I went to work, you didn't see her the whole time I was gone. Imagine how she feels. I got to work for a month. She's a mom, 24 hours a day. She's alone. And I want you to understand that she really needs your help. For me, I never thought I'd let y'all down. Gwen said that she loves being a grandma, but she ain't nobody's nanny. So she is not staying at home with Yara for a month. Jovi said that he does feel bad about his actions and apologizes to his mother. Yara said that she's still trying to figure things out because in her culture, the grandma always takes the child. So it is her mistake for thinking that way about Gwen. Things are all nice and smoothed over now. And Gwen asks Yara how her family is doing. She explains that her mother does want to come to the US, but that her visa appointment got canceled. So because of this, she wants to go overseas because she hasn't seen her mother in three years. Gwen does think it's not the greatest idea to go there because of what's going on. They're almost at war. But Yara seems to think, er, it's not that bad. Jovi said that they'll figure things out because she really does need to see her family. Gwen is worried that they'll all go there and get stuck there. And that's something that she doesn't want. It's the next day and Jovi said to Yara that he has something to tell her and she is itching to find out. <gasps> you know what that is? Your citizen immigration service. I'm sorry, I already opened it. <gasps> You have your green card in here. <laughs> Are you happy? Oh my goodness! I know. God, thank you! Finally! Oh my goodness! My love! You It's time to prove that their relationship is real. They're quizzing each other, you know, on favorite foods and colors, and it's a fail. They got a lot of work to do before the green card interview. Yara can't wait to share the news with her mother, so she heads to a cafe so that she can have a video chat with her. Her mother cries out of sheer happiness and says that she wants to see Myla as she misses her. Yara said that she'll see her in a month and she'll be their free nanny. Her mother does not mind to be a nanny at all. Is that a jab at Gwen? Yara says that she'll see what happens with Ukraine. Of course she does wanna go home, but she isn't sure because of the events that are taking place. Plus the president is advising stay away from Ukraine. Her mother is hopeful and says that everything will be fine. And she does have a 
house in Ukraine, but she is currently staying in Prague in Czech Republic. Yara is hoping for the best as she does want to see her family soon. I can just imagine how tough that is. And that is everything between Jovi and Yara. On to Bilal and Shida. It's the next day and Shida has prepared breakfast in bed for Bilal. She's hoping that it will break the ice because he's not too happy with her. Bilal said that she's his wife and he expected the best from her. So he is quite disappointed with how she handled things the day before. He feels that she didn't give Shahida a chance to speak from the moment that she arrived. She went in full force. She apologized for disappointing him and explained that he needs to understand that when Shahida paid her a visit, that she also didn't give her the chance to speak. What I'm trying to get you to understand about the situation, because it has nothing to do with her per se. Because if it's not her today, it'll be somebody else tomorrow, somebody else next week. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that you cannot let other people dictate your behavior. Shida feels that all the blame is on her. And she does want peace, but everyone has their breaking point and she reached hers. She's just simply saying that enough is enough. She said to Bilal that he has to understand that she's dealing with a bully. He said to her that she focuses too much on the negative and if Shahida was a bully, he wouldn't have married her. She feels that he does need to stand up for her sometimes as she's his wife. He stressed the importance of peace and said that she shouldn't let anyone or anything take her away from who she's supposed to be, which is a dignified Muslim woman. I'm trying to rectify this situation so that you and I can have a better relationship. This is hard because I don't see myself as doing anything wrong. What is this point right here? Is this blaming her or is this taking acknowledge for yourself? I take full responsibility for my actions. Shida doesn't want Shahida to feel that she's an enemy or that she hates her. So if Bilal wants her to be the bigger person and apologize, she'll do that. She hopes that in the future that Bilal can show that he has her back and is on her side. And that is everything between Bilal and Shida. On to Kimberly and Usman. Today, Kimberly is off to see her man in Nigeria. This trip is really important because if they don't get the blessing from Usman's mom, then she doesn't know what's gonna happen with their relationship. I had to laugh, y'all, because on the way to the airport, Kimberly puts Usman's music on and the look on Jamal's face just said it all. He didn't look too impressed to me, even though he said it was actually pretty good. His face was telling me otherwise. He lied to his mama. Jamal doesn't want his mother to propose as soon as she gets there, but she wants him to just trust in what she's doing. Kimberly has been hurt in the past and Jamal doesn't want to see her go through that again. And Usman does have a way with words. And with that, off she flies to Nigeria. Usman is getting all dolled up because he wants to look good for Kimberly and he cannot wait to see how beautiful she looks. They'll be spending a few days in Abuja and then they'll head off to Sokuto to meet his family. This time around, they're gonna be sharing a room because it's important to Usman when you're in a relationship, a man and a woman should be having sex. Well, at least we don't have to listen to Kimberly beg for the yammy yammy. Well, I sure hope not. He's excited to see her, but doesn't know if he's gonna kiss her. It depends if there's a lot of people around or not. He has presents for her this time around because she's always giving him gifts. He also doesn't want this trip to be a stressful one in regards to this whole second wife thing and meeting his family. The time has come. <laughs> Now whose child did he take those plush toys from? Kimberly is happy to see her man and get the yammy yammy tonight. But they do have things to talk about such as the whole second wife thing and getting the blessing. They arrive at the hotel and even though they have a lot of things to discuss, Usman just wants to have fun. He's ordering room service, got them some champagne, 
some samosas, and cowtail. It's time for Kimberly to bless Usman with some gifts. She got him a t-shirt with their picture on it and also matching bracelets that said his queen, her king, which Usman loved and couldn't wait to put his bracelet on. The food arrived and Kimberly was ready to chow down, but uh-uh, Usman wanted to get down to business before they chowed down. How many nicknames do you have for our sex life? How many nicknames? Name them. Um, there are many. We have Yami, we have Fertilizer, we have Power Bike, we have African Ingredient, we have... Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 come on. Wait, come on. I don't want to hear... Keep, keep. You're so crazy. Wait! <laughs> You're pulling me out! You're pulling me out! <laughs> Fertilizer? Yeah, for the second wife, maybe. It's the next morning and Kimberly is disappointed because she didn't get the yammy yammy. They actually both fell asleep. She's excited to have some alone time with Usman before they meet the family. So today, they're off to go go-karting. I must say, it did look like fun, and Kimberly was going ham behind the wheel. They sit down and talk about things, and of course, the second wife thing pops up. Apparently, when the time comes, the second wife is to reside in Sokoto. Kimberly doesn't want her to be in the same city because when she visits, she don't want to see her. And she has every right to call the shots because she is the first wife. I think it would be better if she stays, you know. Wait, 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 wait. So if we're in Nigeria, when you come, you don't want to be around way? Like, come on, are you shutting the same or what you saying? Usman is not taking the second wife thing seriously. Like, I already don't want that mental image in my head, and now you say something like that. If he's going to be sleeping with another woman, well, I'm in Abuja. I'm going to make him bleach his every time he comes near me after that. Things are starting to get a little heated, and Usman said, well, we're having a good time. Why did she have to bring that up? Oh, gosh. Here we go with the arguing, and it hasn't even been a hot minute since Kimberly has been there. And that is everything between Kimberly and Usman. On to Jenny and Samit. It's the next day after the massive fight, and they decide to go for a walk to talk about things. Jenny expresses to him that she was hurt because she didn't know what was going on, and she knew that he would go chasing after his mother. And that is the reason why she lashed out on him. Samit's priority was to comfort his parents because that was a shock for them to hear that he was married because they didn't think that it would happen. And he is losing his family just for Jenny and thought that she would have been more supportive. He was expecting a lot more from her because she is his wife. I understand everything you're saying to me right now and it was wrong what I did. Yelling at you was wrong. And I'm sorry that I yelled at you, but you have to realize that I just went I through a big thing too. I needed you too at the same time. I'm sorry I left you alone. She asked him how does it feel now that he's told his family. He said he's kind of torn because he thought that his family would be happy because he's happy. But that was not the case. But he doesn't regret getting married. He feels that it's worth it to make himself happy over his family's happiness. Jenny wants to know where things will go from here. Samit said just let things be, but he does want to try connecting with his family. I understand how hard it must be to be abandoned by your own parents, but Samit needs to decide between his parents and our happiness. I'm the one that's in this country by myself. He's all I have. He needs to remember that. We are now husband and wife, and he needs to behave like my husband. If you're going to keep being worried about your parents and getting their acceptance, and you never get their acceptance, then where does that leave me? Do you feel that Samit should try to reach out to his family or just let things be and not bother with them at all and just live his life? Let me know in the comments below. And that concludes my recap. I hope that you enjoyed it. On to my final thoughts real quick. For Yara and Jovi, I'm glad that they patched things up with Gwen. And I sure hope that they'll be prepared for the interview because those things are intense. And I do feel for Yara missing her family and worrying about their safety. For Bilal and Shida, I do hope going forward that the ladies can get along. And I do hope that if faced in a difficult situation, that Bilal will stand up for his wife. And I hope that Shida realizes that you can't force somebody to apologize if they don't want to. For Kimberly and Usman, I just roll my eyes at the second wife thing. I Again, I, I've said it a million times, 
I do not see that working out. As for Jenny and Samit, I'm glad that they were able to work things out. They do seem to really love each other. But I do have a feeling that the drama has not ended. That's all that I have to say on this episode. Let me know your thoughts. Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Pop them down below. I definitely like to see your thoughts. If you enjoyed my recap, give me a thumbs up. I like to see that too. And if you haven't subscribed, as I said earlier, hit that red button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. Thanks for watching my beautiful peeps and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.